folks, you didn't cut short here. The competition was simply lit. There were over 700 comments with majority of them being theories. Your theories were fantastic, each and every one of yours. And personally, I really appreciate you taking your time and putting the effort into writing these theories. I went over all of your comments and admittedly, it was much harder than I originally thought. It took me way over 4 hours just to read them all. But the wait is finally over folks. After a long 4 hours of reading, with over 700 submissions, let's go over 5 best theories that you folks will choose the winner from. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and here is the second phase of the best theory competition. Before we get into the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and beware as there will be spoilers ahead. Before we introduce our top 5 finalists, let's quickly go over some honorable mentions who put a lot of effort into their theories. First we have Cookie Element, who has suggested a few good theories actually. The first one regarding to the Veronica song, which might have some significance in brainwashing people. Next is the role of a ferryman in myths, which is the passing of the soul to the afterlife. Although it's a top-notch theory cookie, kudos to you and your roommate. I've actually heard this theory from many others and have watched several YouTube videos going over it. So unfortunately, you're not the first one with this theory. Moving on to the second honorable mention, Crisp Q, you have mentioned how children view adults and how nightmarish they seem. With the teachers seemingly aggressive and mean, some children might think that disabled people are scary, much like the mannequins. And last but not least, the viewers who tend to be the relatives or parents who become angry and start screaming when children interrupt their TV times. Crisp Q, although I really like your ideas, many people have come up with them before. But thanks for putting down your brilliant theories nonetheless. Third honorable mention is from Samzad, who has theorized that Little Nightmares portrays the fear of growing up. Children often view elders as people they would never become, but see themselves slowly turning into them. I remember I promised myself when I was younger, I would never stop playing when I grow up and would only sleep few hours. But now I see myself becoming the adults I didn't want to become. Thanks for your theory, Samzad. And finally, for the fourth honorable mention, we have Stabby Cat, who has written a very well-constructed set of theories in regards to several characters within the game. Thank you all for commenting down your theories and everyone else who didn't get mentioned in this video. Now let's move on to the top five finalists. I will mention their names in random order, as this time around, you will be the judge of them, as you will decide who has the best theory. By voting in the comment section, and in a poll I will set up right after this video. Nightmare World Theory, as Ray Lonex has decided to call his theory, goes like this. Apologies if I'm not pronouncing your username correctly. Once the characters fall asleep, they have to exit the dimension to wake up. Every character they see has the nightmares of their own. Both Sex and Mono wake up in the same dimension. You can interact with other humans in each dimension who are in their nightmare form. In Darren Brown's narration of Little Nightmares 2, he mentions that nightmares leak into the human's world. All of it is in the minds of children but it leaks into their reality. Mono is stuck in a loop where he ends up in solitary, as he fears loneliness, as he's always left behind by his friends. Real Mono has probably had to live fast and grow up fast, and all he wants is to go back and live his childhood, but he must accept that he's an adult now. Something might have happened to him in his real life that reflects this need. The monsters we come across to have their own nightmares. For example, the teacher has empty-headed puppets as students, and her class gets interrupted by one student that keeps thinking differently. The hunter is all alone in a dark forest and something bothers him. The doctor sees his patients as work only and doesn't see them as real people, hence why they're lifeless mannequins, except for one which he fails to save. The thin man is bothered by us, the eyes that watch him. Mono, his nightmare, 
who will eventually destroy him as well. If you think about it, we are the monsters. To these so-called monsters we come across to. A relentless rebellious student to the teacher. Lifeless mannequins and a patient who dies to the doctor. A hunter who gets shot by his own gun. This also carries on in the first game, which suggests that Six as a lucid dreamer. I will let you read the entire comment by yourself and I will also post all of the top 5 theories separately in my community tab, where you can also cast your votes. Reading this theory gave me goosebumps and I honestly loved it. If you like this theory better than the other 4, which I will mention soon, write down in the comment section Raylonix. Next up we have Captain Apple. Again, if you like this theory better, write his name down in the comment section. Captain Apple unveils a theory about the cryptic questions to where children come from. His theory suggests that the children are not born on Earth or the place the Little Nightmares world is set in. They possibly come from a different planet or dimension. He uses an interview with Tarzir as evidence that they quoted, we were just really really taken with the idea of grotesque world and a child put in the middle of it. Also, he uses the game description of the game that reads, you play as Mono, a young boy trapped in a world that has been distorted. His theory carries on that the developers of Little Nightmares say that the world is based on little kids' fears. They even mentioned that most of the monsters don't have any motivation. They don't have any end game. In another interview, it quotes, Residents of Little Nightmares World don't have motivation. For example, the hunter is just bloodthirsty. The eye monster has the role of the collection of all the children's fears in one entity. The eye watches all of the kids' fears and adjusts the world to become a creepier and scarier world for them. The eye feeds off all things negative, all the negative energy. It remembers them all. That's when Mono comes in who has a fear of loneliness. Mono's imagination, however, allows him to have the powers to distort the nightmare or the world. This becomes crucial to the eye. The eye calls out to him to lure him in just to close its doors on him. That's how the first loop is created. This allows the transmissions to become stronger. A new Mono wakes up in each nightmare to take over the previous Thin Man in each cycle. Sex, however, is a new introduction in this loop that we play in. Mono has a chance of escaping this time, not being alone. But the eye manipulates Six to betray Mono, and in return, a heartbroken Mono gets more stuck in this time loop cycle. You can read the full theory, and I will also post it on my community tab. Another fantastic and unique theory by Captain Apple. Next up, we have a shorter theory from Iris Evelina. The theory suggests that the children might be going through some mental illness, which is why they look at the places involved in Little Nightmares differently. They look at the hospital as a place full of lifeless mannequins who are mobile. And I believe it's a mental illness when you see mannequins in the dark moving about or inanimate objects in the dark resembling humans. There's a big theme of suicide in this game as well, and the city and the events taking place in the city seem to be distorted memories of these children who have been traumatized. For example, children who have bad memories see schools full of bullies and the teachers with distorted long necks that follow their every step. Also the brainwashing of grown-ups by the TVs, where they don't care about anything but the TVs and tend to be only calm in presence of the TVs. Otherwise, they become angry and hostile. Also this answers the question to why there are always small things suitable for children such as stairs or ladders. It's because it's all just a nightmare where everything appears bigger and scarier. Again, you can read the full theory plus an additional one attached to this expanding on the hunter and the doctor. I will also post it on my community tab. If you like this theory, write the name Iris Evelina in the comment section. Next up, we have Mikael Kenar. Apologies if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. The theory is about a character in the comic app. This character is no other than the girl with pigtails and a bleeding nose. The theory is by far one of the most unique I've ever heard. The theory suggests that this girl builds a relationship with the doctor. When you see a mutilated live person behind the curtain in the hospital, it appears to be no other 
than this girl. In the app, the doctor seems to have been experimenting with the girl, passing spoons to her and observing her moves and actions. It's quite possible that as this girl is the only living person in the hospital, the doctor values her life very much. But as he is pre-assigned to be a doctor in this world, he conducts experiments on her regardless of him carrying out psychotic experiments to no end. Again, you can read the full theory by pausing the video or in the community tab. If you like this theory best, write down Mikhail Kanar in the comment section. Great theory, Mikhail. And finally, we have a theory from Alpha Vortex 108 who has a similar theory to Ray Lonex, but it's straight to the point and a comment I saw first. So it's definitely worth the position in top 5. This theory suggests that the protagonists, although I think he meant to say antagonists, are living in their nightmares as well. A TV man with no normal audience, a doctor with no living patients apart from one which he fails to save, a teacher with no real students, a hunter with with no dogs and a geisha with a deformed ugly face. You can read this theory by pausing the video or in the community tab. If you liked this theory the best, you know what to do. You can comment down the name Alpha Vortex 108. All right folks, here were the top 5 finalists. It's up to you now. Cast your votes by leaving the name of the person you believe who deserves to win in the comment section down below. Make sure to only write down the name of one person. I will count the votes after several hours. Maybe by tomorrow I will finish. I will also set up a poll right after this video, which you can also use to cast your votes. I will announce the winner tomorrow or the day after tomorrow by making a video about them. That about does it for this video, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, stay tuned right here by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. You can also follow me on Twitter where you can send me direct messages. It's been your host R, thanks for being here, till the next time, have a fantastic day.